I'm Ali, I'm one of the physios from sportsinjuryphysio.com. This is the first component to the group of videos that we're about to make on greater trochanteric pain syndrome or lateral hip pain or outside hip pain. So if I quickly stand up and show you where we're talking about, it is this outside aspect of your hip over this bony area. Now that bony area is called your greater trochanter. That is basically your thigh bone as it comes out to the socket in your hip, makes this part that you can feel that we've just put my hands on, and then your femur runs down your thigh. That greater trochanter is the area where lots of big muscles attach or go over the top of that are related to moving your hip. Some of those muscles are your glute muscles and the deeper muscles, which are gluteus medius and gluteus minimus, their tendons come and attach right into that greater trochanter as does your gluteus maximus. Underneath those tendons, you have a sac of fluid and that sac of fluid is called a bursa and that's there deliberately in everyone to stop those tendons from rubbing and causing friction on that bone. Now, old term and old money, this used to be called trochanteric bursitis or hip bursitis. And this was tended to be treated with um, maybe some ultrasound machine over the top and maybe some injections that you might have had of corticosteroid. And this traditionally wasn't overly successful, worked in some cases, but in a lot of cases it didn't. So with the advent of looking with more scans and more technology, we've been able to see, well, actually, if it's not just the bursa that's irritated by this problem, what else could it be? And that's led us to think it's more about those tendons and those tendons develop a tendinopathy. So if you were to look at your tendon and look at those gluteal tendons as they insert into that greater trochanter, they will be made up of lots of lines of collagen fibres. And those collagen fibres are in nice long straight lines and they're in bundles. So there's lots and lots of these bundles that make up one of those tendons. When a tendon becomes um, unhappy, so it creates a tendinopathy, there is a change in the structure to those fibres. So instead of being in a nice straight line, they're now in a jacked apart, a disorganised fashion. The cells in between, called protoglycans, have become a little thicker and happier to take on more water content, which helps with that disorganisation. Now this is only in a few of those fibres, in maybe one of those bundles, and all of the other bundles, those fibres might be okay. So how do we treat that? We treat that by making those fibres stronger. And you make those fibres more stronger so they're more robust and you can do more without pain or problems. Now, we've talked about the tendinopathy being one part, but also underneath there, we've talked about that bursa, and that bursa can also get irritated. And we used to call it a bursitis because that's inflammation of the bursa. Now we're debating about whether there's inflammatory response going on. It might just be more of an irritation. It's becoming angry because of what's happening to it. So this is why the term has now changed from trochanteric bursitis to greater trochanter pain syndrome because it encompasses lots and lots of different structures that might run over that area. Thank you for listening and please um, turn to our second part of this series where we talk about what symptoms you might be getting if you have outside hip pain. Thank you.